Hello, it's Thursday. This week, instead of yarn, I'm coming to you with a ripped bed sheet and a plan. My goal is basically to upcycle this sheet. It's going to evolve like a Pokemon. So what is upcycling? Basically, it's taking something that's a bit tired or could end up in a dump somewhere and giving it a second chance to be useful or appreciated. So these sheets have got a big hole in them now. So basically what I want to do is take this ripped up old sheet and turn it into fabric yarn and then crochet it back into a blanket for the bed. So completing its circle of life. Now, these sheets are very different fabric to t-shirts, and I've only ever really seen fabric yarn made with that very stretchy jersey fabric. So I have no idea if this will work, but that's never stopped me before. So I'm gonna try anyway. Now, you might look at this sheet and be like, why bother, right? I don't like the idea of abandoning them somewhere. So long story and a bunch of personal issues aside, I feel very strongly that this sheet deserves better than being scrapped. Anyway, okay, on to the process. So as you watch this, remember, while it's too late to save me, your comments might help somebody else attempting a similar type project who ends up here. So leave your best advice in the comment section down below to try and help them out. I've already washed and dried both of the sheets. So I've got the, the clingy sheet that has the hole in it and I've got the, the top sheet, which is actually fine. So I'm gonna be doing all of my experimentation with the clingy sheet. And then if for whatever reason, this project goes completely pear-shaped, we will just make something out of the yarn we can make from the clinging sheet and we'll put the top sheet away so that there's no unnecessary waste here. Okay, so I'm gonna start by prepping the sheets. I've looked into trying this sort of thing before, so I feel like I can fumble my way through. So the first thing I'm gonna do, just because it is the fitted sheet, uh, that means that it has a bunch of like elastic and it has some stitching and some tags as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove all of that. So I thought about trying to unpick but unfortunately, these are very well-made sheets. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut away the elastic uh, and then see what I can do about the stitching. Now, I am just going to preserve the tag just because the care instructions will actually still be kind of applicable. And it does say here that this is bamboo linen. So there we go. That answers that question for me. Is there anything more satisfying than a really sharp pair of scissors? So we're going to look after that tag. And then... Feeling, I'm feeling a lot of anxiety about this. You don't just be cutting things up. I'm not the sort of person who just like hacks things up. So this, is, this might be therapy. This might be good for me. All right, so we're gonna start. There we go, there we go. We've, oh wow, it's instantly just like collapsing on itself a little bit. All right, I wanna preserve as much of the fabric as possible. So I'm gonna cut really close to that line. So I'm basically just working my whole way around that band of elastic. Maybe I can preserve that elastic and use it for something else as well. Reason that I'm doing this instead of trying to patch the sheet is because not only does it have those few torn holes in it, but you can see a couple of places where the fabric itself is just starting to give out. And I thought that crochet would be the best way to sort of like strengthen it. Cause honestly, at this point it was going to have to be turned into rags otherwise. So having removed all of the elastic, I then moved on and snipped away all four corners of the stitching as well. Okay, so now that I've prepped all of that, I've just, I don't have very straight lines, but hopefully that won't matter too much. <laughs> right, so next I need to cut this fabric into strips, sort of three centimeter-ish wide, one inch wide strips so that I can crochet it. And I, I kind of feel like the longer the strips are and the fewer joins between them, the more successful this project will be. Now, as I mentioned, this fabric has no stretch to it at all. So I am all of a sudden very, very concerned about it fraying. But I do have a pair of pinking shears that will hopefully stop everything falling apart. So pinking shears are the ones with the little triangles that you can use in sewing if you don't have an overlocker. Now, these are queen size bed sheets. And so what I want you to do is go down to the comments and leave a guess as to how much yarn you think I'm going to get out of just the fitted sheet. And then I'm gonna make it a point to measure it and I'll let you know how close you got. So now you've left your guess, I'm gonna make my guess. So this is a queen sized pair of sheets, as I mentioned. And the way I figure it, it's 1.5 meters by two meters. And if I cut it into three centimeter strips, that means that I should come out with about a hundred meters of yarn. So let's see how close we get. <laughs> but basically I wanna try and do this right. So we're gonna, we're gonna move to a bigger surface.
okay, so you might be having to tell that the project went a little off the rails. I um, have ended up with lots of loops <laughs> of yarn instead of one long strand. So I'm gonna actually have to do a lot of joining together when I was kind of hoping to avoid that. Fewer joins between them, the more successful this project will be. And also, can I just say that cutting all of that up was exhausting. I think my thumb is twice the size it used to be. So <laughs> keep that in mind. You might wanna get a roller if you wanna try something like this yourself. So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure it and join it together in one big long spool and basically ball it up and see what we end up with. So I cut up all the loops and I joined all of the ends together so that it formed one big strand. And then what I did is I measured the length of the table and just laid it out end to end to end to quickly measure roughly how long it was. And I'll let you know what that answer was in a minute. And there is my big beautiful ball of yarn. So you can see here the little swatch that I went ahead and made. So in general, I'm pretty happy with the look and feel of how it turned out. Now I did use a nine millimeter hook for this, which I think was a bit small. So I'm going to use a 15 millimeter hook for the main one. And I think I'll stick with a very gappy pattern for the main one as well. But yeah, at this point, I'm really happy to proceed as planned and convert the top sheet into yarn too. Now my hands really hurt after round one, but luckily my wonderful fiance was on hand to help me with the second round. So he had a little bit of a rough start. Uh, he cutting all of the, the sewn ends off. Once I showed him that we could fold it and he didn't have to cut every strand individually, things moved a lot faster. So I helped him get started, but then he was able to help work out why I ended up with loops the first time instead of one long strand. So this sheet was actually a lot easier than the fitted one was. Right, so here are our two big balls of yarn. They weigh about a kilo each. And we did end up with sort of a small pile of scrappy stuff that I'm not willing to get rid of yet, just in case I end up playing some yarn chicken with this. Now I'm currently of two sort of minds about what to do with this. So I know I want to make like a really nice texture blanket for the end of my bed. But once this is gone, there isn't any more. So I don't know how risky I want to do regarding yarn chicken. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to risk it. I'm going to work up a rectangle piece uh, with the similar kind of gappies that I've done in my test swatch here. But I'm going to try it with a bigger hook so it has a little bit more of a flex to it. And that's what I'm going to work on now. So with both my balls of yarn ready to go, I grabbed my hook and we started chaining roughly how long I wanted the longest side to be. I then just worked it up in rows of alternating double crochet and chain stitches. It then reached a point where the blanket was too big to comfortably crochet on the desk. So we're going to jump to the end now. And then the inevitable happened. 
yarn chicken. Three stitches short of the end of the piece, I ran out of the main yarn. Thankfully, I still had my swatch that I hadn't used. And so I was able to frog that and use a little bit of that yarn just to finish off my main blanket. So here is the finished blanket. It turned out a pretty decent size. It's the perfect size for just a really comfy chair or for the end of the bed, which is exactly what I wanted it for. So yeah, I just, I really love the weight of it because it's about two kilos. So it's got that really thick, heavy, comforting feel to it. But I also really appreciate the texture and just how soft it is. So I'm pretty pleased with it, honestly. And what's really funny about all of this so my sheet still has holes in it. <laughs> what do you guys think? Was it worth it?